everyone, it's Linda again. Welcome back to my channel. In one of my previous videos, we looked at the file list method. The file list method from the Google Drive API version 3 is a method which gives you the ability to list all of the files on the authenticated user's Google Drive account. However, the response that is returned is in the form of pages where each page contains a default of 100 rows, which can be set to a maximum of 1,000 rows. So what happens if the user has more than 1,000 files on their Google Drive account? Well, that's where the next page token in the file list response comes into play. The next page token can be passed in your next request in the page token parameter, which will cause the request to return the next page of data in your original request. In this manner, we can paginate over requests, each request containing a number of files until we reach the final page. Several years ago, I was actually working on an application where I was doing just this. I was paginating over a number of requests using a recursive method. After a while, I kind of realized that this was, was a very cumbersome solution in my opinion. And I mentioned it to John Skeets, who is also a contributor on the Google.net client library. And I asked him if we couldn't come up with a more elegant way of doing this. So between the two of us, we came up with the page streamer method, which in my opinion is a very elegant solution to this issue. Personally, I would have liked to call it the paginator, but John Skeets decided it should be the page streamer. So page streamer it is. So in this video, I am going to walk you through how to use the page streamer in order to access the next page token and to get your additional requests. You can use the page streamer with any of the Google APIs with the methods that uh, return a next page token. Uh, this is normally the list type of methods that return a next page token. The only API that I'm aware of right now that it doesn't work with would be the Google Analytics reporting API. And that's because it has its own version of batching internally. And it just, it just doesn't work with that API. But once you have the page streamer set up in your code, it will just go about automatically fetching all of the next pages for you. The only thing you might want to consider would be the amount of your quota that is going to be eaten up by this request, it, it's just gonna keep going. If the user has a million files on their Google Drive account and you divide that by a thousand, that's a lot of next page tokens it's going to be going through. So you need to consider that before actually setting up the page streamer because there's no way to stop it. It's just gonna keep going for you. For this example, I'm going to create a simple .NET Core console application but you can use service accounts with libraries or ASP.NET Core applications as well. It's completely up to you which one you use for your project. The code you'll be using will be exactly the same as the code that I'm showing you here. For this project, I'm going to add a single constant to the top of my program class file. This is the path to the JSON key file which we downloaded from Google Developer Console. The JSON key file contains all of the information needed to authorize the service account to Google. In order to use the Google Drive API version 3, we will need to add a NuGet package to our project. This NuGet package will include all of the methods we will need for both authorizing our application as well as accessing all of the methods behind the Google Drive API version 3. The code needed to authorize a service account is actually only one line. You just pass it 
the JSON key file and define which scope of access you need. In this case, because we'll be downloading a file, we probably only need read access, but with service accounts, I tend to always give them full access because I know it's an account that I control and therefore I don't see any reason to limit its access. The last part of the setup we will need to do is to create a drive service object. The drive service object is the object we will be using to make all calls to the Google Drive API. In order to set this up, all we have to do is pass it the credentials that we had from the previous call. The first thing we need to do is create a file list request. In this case, we would like to list all of the files in a folder on my Google Drive account. I already shared this folder with the service account. And what I did in order to give us a little bit of test data was I used my file upload sample and I uploaded 5,000 dummy files to my Google Drive account. Yes, I test these things so that you don't have to. So we need to create a files list request. Rather than just sending the files list request, I am going to set the page size to 1,000 because like I said, I uploaded 5,000 files. I don't want to paginate over 100 files each time. So we're going to do it over 5,000, which means it should only make five requests. Much better idea. And I'm also going to use the queue parameter. Remember the searching uh, video that I made last week? You can use the queue parameter to search for only files within a specific folder on Google Drive, this being the folder that I shared with the service account on my personal Drive account. Okay, now we have to configure our page streamer. The page streamer method takes several parameters. The first it needs is the request modifier, which is an action to modify a request to include the specific page token. Then it needs the token extractor, which is a function used to extract the next page token from the response, followed by the resource extractor, which is a function used to extract the sequences of researches from the response. Yes, I got that directly out of the comments. Okay, let's try and do that in English this time, shall we? Let's take the last one first, the resource extractor. That is actually, if you look at the response coming back from files list, the files themselves come back in a property called files. Now, if you look at the YouTube API and the videos list, it actually, the videos actually come back in dot items. So the resource extractor is the location or the property in the response where each of the items is stored. Yeah, I know it doesn't make much sense, but it, 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 it will once you start using this method more often. The next to last is the token extractor, which is basically just the location of the next page token in the response. It should almost always be response.nextPageToken. I don't think I've actually seen anywhere where it's not response.nextPageToken. All right, now let's consider what we are going to do with the results that PageStreamer fetches. What I normally like to do with PageStreamer is store all of the results into a single object. So rather than having five or six files list responses, I would have one files list response that contains all of the files in it. The reason I like doing this is because then I can sort it locally. I've done that a lot of times. I just sort everything locally for display. This works for me. Let's try that now. As you notice, all I'm doing is creating a simple files list object with nothing in it. 
and then as page streamer runs and it fetches each row, all it's really doing is adding the results to the main object. And then finally, we can list the results that are coming back. And as you notice, it just it's just a normal straightforward for each loop, and then it just loops through each one of them and spits them out onto the console. A lot of the Google APIs have list methods and they return next page tokens. Some of them have defaults that are very low. For example, the YouTube API, I believe you can max return 50 videos in each request. Looping over these next page tokens can be really annoying sometimes, having to create a recursive method to go in and fetch all of the rows for you. Because honestly, if you're gonna make a request, you're gonna want all the rows. You're not gonna just want the first page. So I hope you can see that using the page streamer can really help you to accomplish this in a very elegant manner. Well, that's all for now. I hope to see you back for my next video. And as always, I hope you have a really great day.